practice always kind of opens up our minds um, to, um, to other ways of looking at things, other ways of doing things. So it's going to be a, a critical perspective. Next, please. Uh, within social media, I really want to focus today uh, basically on the likes of Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, to some extent Google. Google is not centerpiece today because unlike these others, Google is more of a medium for connectivity and more of a medium as a vehicle for delivering you and me to advertisers. Unlike Facebook, which does that, but also is in the business of um, uh, you know, aggregating news, and uh, and re and 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 re uh, you know uh, sending the news. Plus, it does many other things. The Twitters, by the way, Twitter is owned by. No, sorry, Instagram is owned by. Um, good morning. Good morning. Sir. Yeah, sorry. Instagram. I'm good. Thank you. Instagram is owned by Facebook, and then we have Twitter. You know. So, and again, these are some ideas. This, this is not an area where I normally do research, like yesterday. That's the area where I do research. But this is basically, I'm interested in media effects. I teach media effects. And so, it is basically my reading, um, my discussing uh, issues, and then sharing them with you, especially the younger generation if you are the main users of these kinds of technologies, not us. The last time, probably you might laugh at me. I, go ahead, laugh. The last time I went into my Facebook ap account was about four years ago. Oh, you are so <laughs> underdeveloped. <laughs> Dr. Melkote, what's wrong with you? But actually, I'm having the last laugh. <coughs> Facebook has very little information on me. They don't know me. I mean, Facebook and LinkedIn chased me for many years, you know, but uh, I managed to not get in. Um, anyway, that we can talk later. That's a personal issue. Um, but you are the main generation, and uh, the generations coming right after you uh, is, is worse than you. Um, and the generation and the uh, uh, people a few years older than you. So you are the main, uh, though of course, we do have users in their 40s and 50s. Way back in on uh, November 1st, uh, 2013, a Ukrainian journalist uh, decided to write something on, a, on, his, uh, on his blog and he sent it out. It was something political in nature. It was a complaint, it was a criticism about uh, political issues and events in his country. He sent it out. And uh, he got lots of likes. So he, and then he got 600 likes in a matter of about five hours. And so he got back and said, guys, I don't want your likes, thank you very much. I don't want your likes. Let's do something about it. Let's act. And then a few months later, there was a political revolution in Ukraine. Uh, I don't know how many of you followed. Uh, there were mass protests in the Maidan Square in Kyiv which is the capital of Ukraine. And ultimately, the despot who ruled U Ukraine had to fly in the middle of the night to his uh, uh, protectors in Russia. Before that, we had other instances where social media uh, played uh, some role. We don't know exactly how much, because nobody has done any empirical analysis. But 2009 in Iran, the elections in Iran, uh, again, if you want to go back and check it out, there were widespread protests, especially by young people, 
uh, college students against the regime of Ahmad, Ahmad, Ahmadji Nijad, it's a very long name. Um, they took to social media to crowdsource, to communicate, and of course, 2009, uh, the protests did not end very well for the students because uh, there were widespread allegations of, uh, you know, corruption, and uh, it didn't help. But at least it established social media as as a vehicle that could be used to bring people together. Yesterday we talked about that. I I. I gave you an alternate perspective yesterday, I said, can, can we use communication to build commonness? Can we use communication media to bring people and groups and communities and units together on issues that are of importance to them? So here was social media, you know, a, a bringing like-minded people together to act. And yesterday I also said social and political um, uh, action is very important in a society, in democratic societies, to bring about change, social and political action. And so these are all examples um, of um, action. Of course, in 2011, the famous uh, revolution uh, in Egypt, in Tahrir, in Tahrir Square, that was successful. They managed to throw out Hosni Mubarak, the military dictator, and uh, it, there were democratic elections. And that Kiev in the Tahrir Square for weeks together, there were protests. And again, Facebook and uh, and uh, Instagram and uh, and uh, Twitter, they were all very useful again. So another. Another example for you. Of course, that also didn't end very well because a few years after the new government was installed, military dictatorship came back and, and so on and so forth. But yet it laid a precedent to the idea that that's why we call them as social media. These are media that are in the social arena and that they can be used and they should be used. So it looks like Social media started off very well, and to be a global force for plurality, for democracy, for progress, these, some of these events I have talked about. And remember, when we talk of social media, we talk about the globe. We are moving away from this idea of nation, because these are, the, uh, these are global media, which means anybody, anywhere can access it. It doesn't matter where you are. So these are really, and so the marches in Tahrir Square, the protests in um, Iran were watched everywhere by interested people. I watched. In fact, I remember a scene in the Iranian elections of 2009. A whole bunch of college students and young people were going on a march, you know, like we do in India also. Murda Abad, Zinda Abad, like that, you know, watching. Of course, this doesn't have a good end, so I'll just tell you. This was the first footage that came out, so which means the editors still were not ready to edit. And going, and then this, this is young woman, yeah, college student, she's, she's also walking, and for some reason at that time, the camera was on her. And then suddenly, Right in front of your eyes, she falls down to the horror of her people with her. And then I could see, I could, I could see her dying. Her eyeballs went cockeyed like that. And next minute, there was blood coming out. Some uh, vigilante sharpshooters had killed her. Next time they showed that clip, that was... They, that, no, that was there, but when that ice went like that and blood, they, they blurred the face. Anyway, I was watching it from US, right? So like that, these are global media. 
And of course, uh, these were all done by interested people to have a better society for themselves. So before we start getting into, uh, you know, the, uh, before we, we start, uh, you know, kind of relaxing in this idea, oh wow, social media, they're so great. Those are some of the good things. Since uh, today's talk is a critical look of social media, we want to talk about the bad things. And bad things uh, won't seem bad to you unless you, have a unless you have a reflective capacity to take things in and think about them, understand them. And yesterday, I also told you some of the things that you do, that you use, whether it be your laptop or your thing, do you know, or your smartphones, do you know what the impact of that would be, good and bad? So it's good to know these kinds of things, particularly if you're media students. So these activist idealisms of these movements did not set the tone uh, for some of the things that we are going to talk about. Next, please. Let me pick a few examples here, again, and talk about some of the things that are not, that didn't go very well. A few years ago in Germany, they had political elections. Extremely far-right extremist groups, uh, groups like groups that said that uh, the uh, Holocaust of Jews never happened. That was just, I mean, that, that right wing, they were fringe groups, you know. Fringe groups means very marginalized groups at the fringes of society. They're not mainstream. But in the elections that was held, not the one that held, was held the other day when Merkel came back, but the one before, they won 13% of the national vote. Fringe groups won 13% of the national vote. <coughs> and now, some kind of a journalistic analysis of that shows, now, now, you know, now that we are looking at social media critically, <sighs> Facebooks and Twitters were, doing, were vehicles for a lot of fake news. Fake news did not start with Trump. He has popularized the term fake news. But it has been going on. And in fact, uh, you know, Trump's thing is all part of the trend. 13% by spreading fake news. Fake news are news that are partly based on reality, but most of it is false. So for example, in Germany, uh, people were told that the Muslim refugees pouring in to Europe from Syria uh, were rapists or were or going to bring about Sharia law. And uh, in other words, either completely false, highly exaggerated, and, um, and uh, by stoking, stoking the fears and anxieties of people, and uh, that is one. Russia, Russia seems to be specializing in this. They have an outfit called Internet Research Agency. It is like a factory where people do, where uh, people who work there, hack hackers, they do 12 hour shifts. So th that place works 24 seven, 365. Okay, uh, they don't make blue jeans. <laughs> they don't make uh, you know some plastic buckets or whatever. They are there researching on you and me, you especially, not me. I don't have a Facebook account. They're targeting you, and um, so we'll talk about that now. Uh, Russia, it has actively used s social media in other countries, including their own 
to plant fake stories in Ukraine. Now, Ukraine is a mess, especially the eastern part of Ukraine that's closer to Russia. They influence the French elections. They influence, now we are coming to know more and more the US elections. Okay? Um, so this has all become a science now. And of course, it's easier now to do things on the social media because of all the other, uh, other kinds of facilities that are available now. And we can talk about that. So in addition to these human beings who do 12-hour shifts, they have robots. And robots do, uh, for every 10 messages that go out, two messages are composed by robots. So you don't, need, you don't even need human beings or short-form bots. Bots, and these are thousands of bots, they keep your Twitter um, fed because Twitter is like this monster, no, G constantly eating and becoming bigger, eating bigger, bigger. I think in our childhood stories we read, no, about these monsters, eat, 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 fatter, 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 fatter. that's Twitter. <laughs> Take message. <laughs> Take a message. Retweet it, re retweet it, re retweet it. You know, add something, retweet it, retweet it. Yes, bigger. That's, that's the monster, you know, including Facebooks. And, they, and so everything runs on, uh, is controlled by algorithms, <coughs> computers, and they send out messages, tweets, retweets you know, regular intervals. And each retweet is, uh, you know, is diff slightly different from the other one, according to algorithms again. Uh, so that's the kind of research that is done on people and then, and bots do that and uh, their presence is only going to increase. They'll be, they're going to be more and more and more bots. So, next please. Let's talk a little more. Let's talk a little more about this since we are on the topic. Stories, uh, whether they are completely true or completely fake, they bounce between these different networks, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It might look to you as if the whole thing is random, but it's not. It's like a coordinated orchestra. You know, one instrument will come up, the other instrument will go down, and then the <coughs> conductor. You know, so like that. It is, uh, it is completely coordinated, both by human beings and computers, and el which is algorithms. And uh, stories bounce. From Facebook, it'll go to Twitter, uh, Twitter again, uh, it'll come back to Facebook, and each time slightly different. And um, as I was telling you earlier, robots generate, robots actually generate one out of every five stories. When you say robo, you're not, not the actual robo. You know, it's it's, based, yes, based. yeah, yeah, yeah. But in other words, there's no human being there, no. yeah. Um, Basically, all the data is there, all the content is there, and this algorithm will, you know, like the conductor, mix, change this here, change that there, tweet it, tweet it. And it never stops, never stops. Remember, <coughs> global media. When you are sleeping, somebody else is awake, right? <laughs> so it's 24 hour cycle, all right? Uh, here are some uh, numbers for you. Russian controlled trolls bought ads and posted content uh, in the recent US presidential election about divisive political issues. What makes you mad? What makes you really mad? You know? That 
we can, we can actually come up with a recipe. Recipe, what is the outcome of this recipe? To make you mad. <coughs> Again, algorithms can do that, you know? And so, divisive political issues. In United States, uh, what are some of the divisive political issues? There's a lot of racial tension in US. US, they don't have caste, but they have race. And especially with Obama being black, uh, the previous president, and then this new president who doesn't like Obama, uh, and who doesn't also like, at least his policies, the non-white people, a um, lot of tension. Just like in India, we have sometimes we have uh, religious tension between two or more communities. It's very easy in such situations to light a, a little fire, small fire. So you find, research will tell you. How do I know you, you don't like blacks? Oh, sure. Are you, don't you go to Facebook? And on Facebook, you have said a lot of things about yourself. You share stories you like. You know, you put a smiley face, I really like that. Another one will be, I'm laughing, ha, 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 you know, and another, you know, emoji over there. You say, you say a lot of things about yourself. Your psychological profile can be very easily constructed. Some of us also go beyond that. Take a picture of me, ha, <laughs> ha, me and marijuana, ha, <laughs> ha. People post ridiculous photographs about themselves, not knowing that today it can go everywhere, you know? That is also there, that's also recorded, that's there somewhere, okay? And uh, they would take, sto so I know what, what your, are you, are you racially neutral? Do you don't, you don't like certain, you know? All of that will come out in, even though your Facebook things are supposed to be private, Facebook is collecting the data. Facebook, any time you go on Facebook, on Google, everything is recorded, including the number of keystrokes. I want you to know some of these things. Is recorded and stored, <laughs> heaven forbid, but stored, okay, in cloud. That's why we came up with this expression called? Cloud. No, big data. Oh, big, big data. What is big data? Big data is there is so much data available today. They are all stored in the cloud. And a supercomputer can analyze it, okay, if needed. So th there is no dearth of personal information. It's all there in the cloud for somebody to either hack it or analyze it, okay? And so we collect pro they collect profiles. And then let's say you are one of those people who has exchanged a lot of anti-Muslim stories. You will get a fake story. You will get a fake story about how in this particular place, the Muslims in US have uh, adopted Sharia law. But I had, of course, uh, one uh, uh, student of mine, PhD student, comes says, "Sir, did you know, sir, in North Detroit, where there are a lot of uh, uh, American Muslims, they have Sharia law?" I said, "Really? But Sharia law is illegal, according to thing. How did they? Do? No, sir, they have it, sir." I said, "Where did you get your news from?" I got it on the web from some and so. I said, "Did that story appear in any main? Did it appear on CNN? Did it appear on?" New York Times, any, or any major? No. I said, I think, I think that's fake news. And that was fake news. Okay? So stories, they, they can select stories and, you know, depending on your profile, and, and so these, and between whites and blacks, between white and the police, um, and uh, between, um, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, this uh, gender, you know, and all of these are divisive political issues. And it is not uh, a coincidence that such stories can go viral very quickly. 
okay? So now, Facebook and uh, Google, by the way, Google for ads, they also know the methodology of how a story can go viral. They seem to have knowledge because of the data they've collected and by analyzing how many, many stories have gone viral. Viral means, you know what viral is, right? Ver multiply very large number of times, that's viral. They know the methodology of what to do, what to do, what to do. May doesn't mean it will succeed every time, but they do. And so all of that information also is available to their native researchers. Unfortunately, Facebook that was started with this very grand notion by Zuckerberg that he is going to create this, this public sphere of uh, community, of um, transparency, but actually Facebook is the most opaque, and Google, they are the most opaque institutions. Opaque means you don't know what is happening inside. I want you to know about another thing about uh, uh, you know data analysis. This and this is also a this is also a fact. The, your commercial radio, your commercial TV, they all depend on advertising, right? And they make they depend on advertising money, and they also do the same thing. They also collect information about you. Uh, so that they can sell you to the advertiser saying I have a good market here if you know this is where you should come and you know so all of these but there's a big difference a your older media don't they're limited in the amount of information they can collect about you okay because unlike Facebook here Facebook doesn't have to do anything you go to Facebook and you willingly provide information. Think about that again. Face, you just go on Facebook, on Twitter, and you willingly provide, which is all recorded again. Okay? Whereas radio and TV commercial, we don't willingly. There are, there are still media where there is not much interaction between the source and the receiver. Whereas with social media, internet media, we are the actors, okay? We are not passive. When you open up your computer or when you open up your phone and get your thumb ready, okay? You're not passive. You are an active consumer. You are there controlling it. And, you know, you're the one. You are the one who decides, oh, I need to reply that. Oh, I have to put a smiley face there. So you are the one. Okay, so there's a big difference. There's another huge difference. The data that are collected by the older media like radio and TV are analyzed by third party agencies like Nielsen, for example. Whereas Facebook and Google, it's all in-house. So the data that is collected by Google or Facebook it's not farmed out to some third party agency to analyze and give it back to you. They crunch their data, you know. We, so we have, again, opaque. We have no idea what is going on, all right. But the recent scandals are now cracking open. Europe and now India, if you have read today's news, uh, last few, few days, uh, India has served a notice to Facebook to appear, you know, and answer questions. Zuckerberg is going to, uh, has been called by the US Congress to come very soon and answer questions. That's breaking, we don't know how far it's going to be successful, and Facebook, because of all these uh, things, has admitted in the last few months that Russian-influenced posts and ads reached 126 million, at least 126 million Amer voting Americans, 40%. So look at the implication of that. Somebody else can come and pretty much take over the conversations and plant stories, 
fake stories. Okay. Um, okay. Next, please. Let's take a few. In uh, talk in a little more detail. You might say, "Oh, I'm still not convinced, Dr. Melkore. Convince me more." Okay. All right. I'll try to convince you more. You know about the Brexit? Yes, happened in 2016. Britain decided to leave the European Union. Any British citizens here? <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Move. When I was younger, I was told by an elder in my family, if you have a problem with your father and mother and you really hate your father and mother, don't run away from home. Stay inside the house and fight. Your chances of winning are much better if you stay in the home and fight than thinking, oh, I'll go out, lot of supporters. No. So similarly, if Britain had some problems with the European Union, they should have stayed in the Union and fought. Instead, they said, Are, I'm taking my, you know, my bister, my chair, my, you know, and I'm going, bye, bye, you know. <laughs> and now they, are, now they know what the cost, slowly things are coming, the cost of leaving the Union. It's quite a heavy price, economically and socially. In the 2016 Brexit, we now can come to know from all the information that is coming out that uh, one billion targeted advertisements, political advertisements, one billion uh, appeared on Facebook. So again, these are the kinds of things I told you earlier. Uh, sto highly exaggerated stories, fake stories, and then um, ads uh, you know, that seem to exploit those kinds of things. One billion, one billion is a lot for a small country with a small population. We're not talking of like India with a billion population, okay? Uh, and these one billion ads were not like, you know, you're throwing your fishing net in the water, hoping that you will catch some fish. Okay, here's the net. Maybe I'll catch some fish. No, you're throwing the net knowing you will catch fish. And which fish you will catch, that also you know. You know, and so these ads were carefully tailored, again, by all the algorithms. And uh, they were slightly different, slightly different, going after different groups. Even though a slight majority of British people did not want to leave the Union, they did. Because that one little bit they needed of votes, they got to topple that. And uh, there were all kinds of ads, anti-Polish ads, because a lot of Polish people come to Britain. Under the European Union, you don't need a visa, you don't need permission uh, to work as long within the Union. And so your jobs, your British jobs, are being taken away by these Polish people, you know, highly exaggerated and so on. And uh, what, what about the 2016 Trump campaign? News is trickling now. Every day you get to hear something. But some of the ones I picked was on any average day, according to Zuckerberg, Facebook between um, Facebook users were targeted with 50 to 60,000 advertisements, not the same people. And each ad was different, okay? Different versions of the ads. Depending on who you are, it'll change a little bit. You know, tailored to that. 50 to 60,000 different versions per average day. Now you know the power of this to create a, 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 a parallel universe. Next, please. But nobody came to know, no, maybe this was going on. No, now. Because Americans are supposed to be very good, you know, in uh, detecting all these things. Uh, apparently, Americans are not very good. <laughs> they, now we know. This is what we're talking about. Now we know. Now we know. And when caught, you know, 
red handed, the American authorities are still not saying that they were fooled. You know, we, oh, by the way, though I'm uh, Indian by heart, my passport is American. Um, you, you need to know that. So, you know, Mises in Karnataka, Mise, twirling your Mise, you know, you know. So, basically, US has been like that. We are Americans, world's greatest power, exceptional. And now they find that Russians had gotten into every little thing, making them look stupid. But since their party is ruling now, they don't want to admit it. In Canada, there's a saying, Bidru Mise Managlila. Mokadmel Bidru Mise Managlila. Nothing, nothing. I'm fine. I f you fall on your face, but still your mustache is okay. It's not dirty, you know. So like that, you don't want to accept in spite of the humiliating uh, defeat uh, that's going on. Um, let's try to, uh, I know I've given you enough examples, uh, so let's try to get deeper into this thing a little bit. What Marshall McLuhan, like I told you yesterday, we let's bring him back again. Medium is the message, okay? So every medium has its own characteristics. So online media have their own characteristics. So they can do things, they cannot do things like other media because the medium itself is the message. Let me quickly give you one or two ideas here of how online media are different. Online media are 24 seven. Online media do not sleep. Right? Online media do not care for dis physical distance. Online media do not care for time. Physical distance and time, which has been the biggest challenge for human beings ever since we stepped on this earth, are not a challenge for online media because there's nothing like distance. You can send an email to somebody in Alaska instantly. Instantly, you can do that. And time also, it doesn't care, time. Time is of no consequence because it takes an instant to reach. And that, those are some of the characteristics of online media. But here I'm talking about, some more, about uh, those features that are more specific to our discussion right now. Social media as, and other media, but especially and, and, uh, focusing on social media are mechanisms for capturing Manipulating, consuming. They're not in the right order, I think. For consume, capturing, consuming, and manipulating attention. Okay, here I have come up with a word that I want to spend some time, starting with the next slide. Attention, keep that in mind, okay? And I'm going to expand on that next slide, but let's talk about what this means. Uh, it's like, I told you, you know, it's like that monster that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So what happens is these media, construct the messages on these media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, are constructed in such a way that you have to keep coming back. Newspaper. There's a newspaper lying. Oh, I didn't read the newspaper. Okay, I won't see that newspaper again. What about your Facebook? I, hey, let, what happened in the last last two minutes? What happened? Oh, let's go. You know. So basically, these things have become like gambling slot machines. You want to put coins so that oh, this time I'll get text. But within five minutes, oh, let me see if got a response. Let me see how many likes I got. Or, you know, what's going on? How has that story developed? You know, and uh, so it's, um, the more media that we consume on this media, okay, um, what is happening is that it's harder to create a shared and open space for political discussion. Now this, this, is, uh, this is a profound, uh, sentence and I want to spend a few minutes trying to uh, explain that. Uh, the German philosopher Habermas 
gave us the concept of public space, a public sphere. And yesterday we talked about that. A public sphere is a space or a place where the public can discuss issues that are important to the public. That's all, that's public place. Where people and anybody else can talk of things that are important to you and your community. That's called a public sphere. In a democracy, if we really are thinking of democracy, uh, you know, democracy is not going every three years, two years, four years, and putting a vote and then forget about it for the next four years. That's not democracy. Democracy is representative government. You have to be involved, even as a citizen, to see how your government is doing, how your corporator is doing, how it, and then if you feel um, angry or you want to say, you have to take you have to c contact authorities. If that's not uh, possible or uh, unsuccessful, you have to get together with the other members in your community. So you have to be vigilant. Then you really have a working democracy. But where is the space and the place for us to get together and talk? Okay. Marxist scholars have made the uh, argument as well, far back as the 1950s in countries, in the industrialized countries uh, of the world like US and other places, the machinery does not allow you enough time to reflect. Constantly kept busy. You get up in the morning and the next four, couple of hours you're busy uh, taking care of your, uh, you know, all the needs you have to, and getting ready to go to work. Then you go to work. And then you're kept busy for several hours. Then you come home around 5, 6 o'clock. Because your friends are like you, right? And so there's not much. So, and different groups on Facebook are not def definitely in contact with each other. So these are... They provide some space, but they're not that kind of okay, open public space where people can come in, okay? Um, okay, next please. I told you that I want to, or, or, or suddenly there is a service, okay? And People on an average spend between four to five hours per day in the research done. Very big players and lots of small ones. That is oligopoly. On a rat, 